Doesn't matter. Just close enough. Oh, you can come over to you a little bit and slide the. Oh, you're good. Okay. And uh, Terry, slide the silver one over to you as well, to the middle. Okay, there we go. Uh, So, smart. Let me hear when you you're ready. Yes, sir. See you saying that now, like yes, sir. Like yeah, man. Come on, get on with it. I done done this thing. <laughs> it does get easier now, don't you? Yeah. It's just like now you don't think about. It. Now yeah. I'm just coming. Start talking. Uh -huh. Okay, get the information. You know, you get interesting stuff. Now, people always when they come and always worry. I interviewed the lady who runs King's Dominion, right. and I saw her sitting over there, and she was just like. Yeah. I go over to my head, like, hey, listen. Yeah. This ain't brain surgery. This is not hard right there. And I'm like, you're just gonna tell your story. And I like how'd you get into this business? Well my parents were and they, they were in an amusement park. What did they do? They got married, they met at an amusement park. That's the start of the story. Exactly. And she says, Well, when I have a rough day, what do you do? She said, I ride in a, a roller coaster. Who else does that? Right. You know, you're an executive, you got a hard day, you get on a roller coaster. So when people, so when we're in there talking, that's the thing, you bring out an interesting, so he's a lawyer, everybody think lawyers are buttoned up, everybody's scared to go see the lawyer. Oh, Lord, we're going to go see Terry today. You never go see him for something good. You're not, right, it's you're not, bad. It's like, you're not the injury lawyer who's bringing him a check. Like, here you go. But they're like, oh, we got to bring Terry. But he tells you he's a drummer. Yep. Next thing you know, it's like. <laughs> People look at musicians, yeah. lawyers, totally different. Yeah. And so that's what you're doing right now. Just you you just talk. Just the lemon drop. Lemon He's drop. Lemon drop. The lemon drop. <laughs> Mike, that name is so funny. <laughs> Who came up with the name? You did. Oh I did? <laughs> yes, sir. You're gonna charge you for it too. <laughs> just best believe. <laughs> I get talked to every morning before I leave the house. I'm always like, Mike, don't be out in the street with a whole bunch of foolishness. Because <laughs> I'm like, yo, they said, though. when I found this right here, mm -hmm. yo, this was it. Yeah. They didn't gave me keys to the kingdom? <laughs> I'd be like, what? Open the doors up. <laughs> exactly. It's a jailbreak. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. All kind of people coming in here. They're like, Hunter, you know, we had, all, we had rappers last week. Mm -hmm. The mayor comes in. It don't <laughs> matter. Yeah, I see. We're just, we know what we're doing. We're just right. talking. All right, Samar, it is your time. Recording in progress. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome back to part two of the Lim Drop. Now I have Mr. Bagby. How you doing, Mr. Bagby? Doing well, thank you. Um, you want to tell people about a little bit what you do? Well, what I've been doing, it seems like uh, no time, but 40 years goes by quick. Okay. I've been practicing law since uh, 1982. Uh, I'm with a large firm, and we travel uh, extensively mm -hmm. in the United States and other countries, defending primarily companies and okay. that sort of thing, a few athletes here and there. I do have to say one thing. Mm -hmm. two, well, two things. Before, I guess two years ago, I didn't know who Samar was. Okay. Uh, and only recently, I knew who Mike King was. Okay. Because somebody told me I was going to be on that show. I said, I better do some research pretty quick. So I got online and uh, traveled so much. And I don't, being from Richmond, I don't see as much in Richmond as I should. Yeah, hey, much in Richmond. And I'm not much yeah, to see. Not much in Well, anyway, I got on uh, online and watched a bunch of my show. And okay. this is. It's just tremendous uh, mm -hmm. radio channel, and I really enjoy seeing the different people he had on, and and of course you're my favorite one. I had no idea you were like Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> the way you ask questions, I, I wish, and, man, I wish. The way you ask questions and follow up, I've been real impressed. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, that's kind of a background. Mm -hmm. Um, well, like, where did you go to school to be a uh, law firm? Well, you know, most of the the people in my law firm go to the biggest schools because it's a well-known international law mm -hmm. firm. I was a little different. I went to smaller schools. I played music for a while, mm -hmm. came back, finished up at VCU. Then I went to a small Baptist school okay. in North Carolina called Campbell University. Mm -hmm. And then I did a little bit of work at Harvard, but not much after that. And, wow. uh, and uh, that's been it. And I've been very fortunate to be with a firm that really looks at hard work. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, you know, in particular, that uh, you don't get anywhere without hard work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
And you said you you, you was in the uh, played a band or instrument. Yeah, it's, it's, it was it's, like hmm? it's part of my sordid past. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay. I played all over. Uh, I say all over, primarily on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And we played. Uh, this is way before your time. <laughs> we played all kind of music, included. We were a mixed band, and we played disco. We played funk. Okay. We played rock and roll. Yeah, I still do it uh, as much as I can around mm -hmm. at local places. Are you good at it? <laughs> uh, it's good enough to get by. Okay, yeah, okay. So, okay. <laughs> it's been good. good. That's good. That's good. So do you think that you can play in front of a, a whole stadium if they, if they wanted you to? Oh, I've done it. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, what, what, what happened, mm -hmm. uh, Samar, is we would go to places where we would open up mm -hmm. for big groups. So the, the, the big stadium crowd wasn't there necessarily to see us. Okay. Maybe most of them didn't want to see us. Mm -hmm. uh, but we would open up and then a big band would come on or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, some big big audiences. Mm -hmm. Now, around town, it's in bars and places like mm -hmm. that. So. And, and you said what instrument do you Drums. Use? Drums. Yeah. You like one of those fast drummers or... You know, uh, Samar, I used to be fast okay. at a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as fast yeah, okay. these days, I but uh, but I still enjoy it. Yeah, I tried to play drums one time, but you know, I I can hit it, but it just won't sound right. No, yeah, but it, it takes time, like anything. Yeah, and can you, can you tell me a little about how you met? Uh, you got me a basketball sign. Yeah. By yep. uh, Ray John Rondo and Kevin Love. Kevin Love. And that was sweet. And I would keep tell how you made that happen for me. Sure. Sure. Uh, a kid that I had known for a long time that I have represented and helped with uh, his financial stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Ed Davis. He's from Richmond. Uh, he went to Benedictine with my son. They played together. Okay. And uh, then Ed was, uh, he went to North Carolina, University of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. His sophomore year, they won a national championship uh, for Roy Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a lottery pick, which was first round pick. He was 13th pick overall. Uh, went to the, uh, who did he go to? Oh, he went to Toronto first. But he's played with a bunch of teams, including he played with Kobe. Okay. He's played with all these guys. So I follow him around the country. And if I needed stuff uh, like basketballs and jersey signs yeah. and stuff like yeah. that, he just finished his 12th year in the league, which is almost unheard of to go 12 years. Yeah. And he's a free agent. I don't think he's given it up yet, but uh, he's had a heck of a career and he's a heck of a nice guy and he's mm -hmm. really done well. Yeah. So that's how I'm getting back to your question. He played on the Cleveland Cavaliers with Rondo uh -huh. and Love. And so when I told him about you, Ed's always doing stuff. He said, let me get this ball. <laughs> and so he sent it. Uh, and yeah. I gave it to you. Yeah, I was very pumped when I seen it. I was, I was happy. I, I told the whole Instagram about it. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. And um, and you said you go to a lot of games. You, you said you went to a lot of games, and you sat behind uh, Kobe Ryan one time. <laughs> one time I did. <laughs> um, the players in the NBA, this is typical of most teams, they get a certain amount of tickets okay. for each game. And they do a lot of good in the community. Uh, they go to children's hospitals and things like that. Uh, go to elderly homes and, and all that. Of course, the kids just love it. And uh, depending on how much the players do, they can get better seats yeah. for uh, their guests. And uh, one or two times we sat behind the Laker bench and mm -hmm. sitting right behind Kobe and, yes. and that crowd. Yeah, I would have recalled his name the whole time. <laughs> you know, it's, it's fascinating. He sits there, and he, he wasn't playing the night I was behind him, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But he's back, he's back there working all the time. Yes. And, and he uh, he's taking notes, and when the, when the players come over, he shows them plays mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, Ed said he was the smartest player he ever played with. I, I can I can I can believe that. You know, he'd tell Ed stuff about games three or four games ago that had happened, mm -hmm. and Ed's sitting there trying to remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's great, and he speaks I think eight or nine languages. Kobe Bryant. Yeah, dang. he was a, a army rat. His dad played basketball. Oh, dang, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, he speaks a bunch of languages. And I remember the first time I seen you came to my house. Um, this man right here, he got me my computer so I can uh, do my schoolwork for college for ODU. And I thank you for that. Oh, you're, you're quite welcome. I was happy to do it. I, when I read about your story, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know about it. And I have, I've been around some folks mm -hmm. who are my age now who are uh, were paralyzed. Okay. And to be happy to know they're still my, they're still around <laughs> my age and doing, still doing good stuff. 
But when I read about your, your story, I called your mom. Mm -hmm. And she said that was the kind of thing you needed. And I was happy to do it. Um, because, you know, you're an inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people. Appreciate and, it. And, I, and I, when I read your story, one thing I've always remembered in life, whether you're working or, you know, whatever it is, sports, mm -hmm. business, law, whatever it is, growing up, one of the most important words in the English language is acceptance. Yes, sir. Okay, and people that don't accept things have a hard time moving on. Yeah. And I could tell from your story, you had accepted mm -hmm. what happened, and you weren't going to let it stop. No, sir, I won't go stop. You know, my mom was there pushing me. I was like, Ma, I got to get the schoolwork done. I got to get a computer in. Next thing you know, she says, somebody named Mr. Bagby <laughs> got me a whole computer, and now I use it to this day, and... Matter of fact, I just finished one of my finals yesterday for one of my classes for ODU. Really? Congratulations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's wonderful. I mean, you, you have terrific parents that, yes. that have really helped you and, mm -hmm. and people like Mike. And uh, it's just a, just a very inspiring story at a time when we don't have enough inspiring stories. Yeah. Yeah, I try to inspire as many people as I can because, I mean, it's a lot of people like me, but I don't, I don't really know if they can do what I can do. So I try to put myself out there to try to help somebody that's in my position or they, if they're not in my position, you know, any position that I can help them in, that they seek and help in. That's great. I got to say. That's a wonderful thing and you know, sharing and uh, helping is just terrific. And you've done a wonderful job of that. We're all very proud of you. Appreciate it. And can I talk about your sons? Yeah, your sons are tough. <laughs> your sons, I mean, he... When he came to our house, his son had to duck down to get to our door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> both both uh, boys didn't have much of a choice. I guess I'm, I used to be taller. I'm shrinking now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm about 6'4". My wife's six feet. And oh, man. My daughter was a college volleyball player. She was six, is 6'2". Six mm -hmm. And uh, the boys are 6'7", uh, six, 6'8". Six, really? They, uh, they, they, they should be in the NFL. Well, the, unfortunately, though, they, they have their dad's feet. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> but, yeah, they're good kids, and they've... Uh, they play any sports? Yeah, they played... Uh, Mitch, the older boy, played with Ed okay. in high school, and uh, Kyle played over here at James River. And, mm -hmm. But then they wanted to go on, and, and they got more interested in, you know, what they were going to do later in life. Yeah. And they quickly realized that only about 400 people mm -hmm. play in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And so their their chances were probably one in a million. So uh, they went to, they worked hard and they both went up to the University of Virginia okay. and got graduate degrees up there. So. Yeah. So down there, so, so what is something that you like doing your free time outside of? Playing music that's that you just enjoy. You know, uh, playing playing music is a big part of it. Um, mm -hmm. Cars, cars. I, yeah, I love cars. Mm -hmm. I collect cars, and uh, so I play with those a little bit and mm -hmm. take them to car shows and things like yeah. that. Yeah, me and my dad like cars. We trying to we trying to get us a couple old school cars to throw together, but you know they're just so expensive now. <sighs> yeah, particularly yeah. right now. Yeah, and they, it's hard to find them. Yeah, it's hard to find them because in the last year or so, post-COVID, they have uh, really been selling like hotcakes. Yeah. And the prices went up. I think that's cool and off right now. Mm -hmm. It always cools off when I'm going to sell my cars. Okay. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, they're a big deal, yeah, cars. Yeah. They're fun. I, I have more modern cars. So. Mm -hmm. And what's, I can I go back to your law job. What's, what's some of the biggest challenges you face with your uh, law, law stuff? Um, biggest challenge, that, that's a great question, Lamar. Um, it's just trying to, when you get up, I do trial work, and when you get out of town, you know, you're in a different city, mm -hmm. you're, you're not used you to. You look like you're a busy man. Yeah, <laughs> so you got, you got judges you don't know, and uh -huh. juries, you don't know how the jury population is. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to adapt sometimes yeah. to different places. Most, a lot of lawyers practice here locally, which is great. Mm -hmm. I never really did that. And so going out of town, I'd say, you know, trying to adapt, trying to learn. I mean, you have 50 states, mm -hmm. okay? Now, in state court, each of the 50 states a lot of times has their own uh, law, okay. okay? And it's different. 
So yeah. if I go somewhere that I've just been, you know, where they have a different law, and now I've got to learn a new one. Oh, man. Yeah. How long does that take? Well, I've got a lot of smart people to work for me, mm -hmm. and uh, I've always uh, uh, leaned on and worked with smart people because okay. they're smarter than I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, they, they come in and learn mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff. And the federal court is a little different because there is a, a scheme, it's not a complete scheme, of federal law mm -hmm. that did. I've got a sister who's a federal judge. I always, myself, I, I don't know if I wanted to be like a, a bounty hunter, a uh, <laughs> police officer. I don't want to be no police officer no more because all the foolishness that go on nowadays. Yeah. But uh, I thought about being a bounty hunter or something crazy like that. Or like, what? <laughs> Some of that guy. I gotta say, uh, given that choice, I'd have probably gone to the police. Yeah. <laughs> Bounty hunter could be yeah. a, little, a little problematic, yeah. too. Yeah. And, shoot, I, I couldn't imagine being a lawyer. That's, you got to be strong and hard to do that. Well, it, it, uh, it's rewarding, particularly mm -hmm. uh, in instances when you take a, a pro bono case. Now, that's a Latin term, meaning you're doing it free. And so you represent somebody who otherwise has been wrong but can't afford a lawyer. Okay. And so you agree to take it, and there's no better feeling than if you can win that case mm -hmm. and get them something they deserve. I'm pretty sure you won, you won many cases. Well, yeah, I hear, I've been lucky. I've been fortunate. Okay. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting, it's a very interesting profession, no, no doubt. Mm -hmm. so, so if I wanted to be a lawyer. Yep. What's one of the first steps I would have to take? I think the first step you have to take some more is to make sure you want it. Yeah. Because you're going to work your butt off getting oh, there. I and I, I tell people now that there's so many people that have come out of law school. And it's a bit of a, it's gotten better, but it's a bit of a glut on the market. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go to law school now, I think you really, really need to want to do it. Okay. Because sometimes you come out, there's a lot of judges, excuse me, a lot of lawyers right around here that aren't making much money. Mm -hmm. And by that time, they're into uh, college tuition, mm -hmm. law school tuition, which is absurd. And then, tomorrow, you've got to pass a bar exam, which, which is not easy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't pass it. So imagine having spent all that money, you get out, and you can't do what you wanted to do. I just stick to being a police officer. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah I'm good on that. <laughs> but but I will tell you, yeah. Samar, if, it, if if you decide it's something that you really want to do in all your heart, you should do it. Mm -hmm. And you can do it. Yeah, I could, but man, it's just <laughs> I've known a lot of lawyers with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I worked for some time with a lawyer who was completely blind. Oh wow! Now, can you imagine? With all the all the reading you have yeah, to do, yeah. he would have a paralegal work with him, and, and she would read all the stuff to him. Mm, like, like, does he read Braille or? Yeah, he does, mm. and, and that helps. But I've also uh, been exposed to lawyers and chairs and things mm -hmm. like that. I bet they, I bet they doing good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, because they know hard work. That's how yeah. they got there. Yeah, just like you. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine being a lawyer nowadays. It just Seem like so much, but y'all, y'all are top dog. I don't think nobody can do what y'all do. It's a crazy life, and I'm coming to the end of mine. I'll probably retire in a couple of years, so mm -hmm. uh, I would not want to start over right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I was in a good period, and I think that period may come back. My daughter is a lawyer oh. now in New York, and uh, she's enjoying it. Yeah, I bet she is. <laughs> <laughs> Telling the people what to do, man. You're right, exactly. <laughs> Tell them what to do. Yeah, and this is the Lemon Drop Show. You can find me on uh, Facebook at Samar Lemon. Or on Instagram, you can find me at s.lemon underscore. You, you don't have any platform, do you? No, unfortunately. I'm uh, too old. Gmail. They don't let me have it. <laughs> Gmail or something. <laughs> yeah.